Hello and welcome to the 27th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn how to insert custom music into our game. Music is, in my opinion, one of the most attractive features of a hack, or even just a game in general. We will be using a few new tools to accomplish this task, including Sappy, Mid2AGB, and Anvil Studio. You may want to download both Mid2AGB and Anvil Studio immediately, but hold off on downloading Sappy for a while. I will be including instructions on how to properly install Sappy, since it's probably one of the biggest obstacles to get working nowadays. Just as a reminder from my very first tutorial though, the first is these videos will not cover meta details like how to download a Pokemon ROM or how to get an emulator to load a ROM. None of this has anything to do with Pokemon ROM hacking itself, and all of these types of questions can be easily solved with a Google search. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I properly install and set up Sappy? And how do I insert custom music without errors? Please understand that this will not be an extremely in-depth tutorial about everything there is to know about music hacking. It's just pretty much the basics and a little more. Odds are you will run into future challenges with music hacking, such as perfecting drum sounds and configuring more technical aspects of your music. However, if you're just trying to insert your own music and have it sound good without super high quality stuff going on, then this tutorial is certainly for you. Our primary goal is to insert our own custom Palette Town music. If you check out the header tab, you'll see which song plays as background music in the map and its respective hex code. Hitting the arrow will show you every valid song in the game, along with their respective hex codes. We're not going to be changing anything here, but it's important to know that map music can be handled here. The hex codes are useful in a few situations, so I'll post a link in the video's description of every 3rd gen game's list of song values if you'd like a nice consolidated reference sheet. The tool we'll be using to insert music is called Sappy. Unfortunately, Sappy can be very stubborn and typically doesn't run for some first-time users due to a missing dependency. It may also not run due to the user's operating system. However, I'm currently running Windows 10, and it works perfectly fine for me. Let's quickly go over how to properly install Sappy and set the thing up. There is a forum post on Wackahack that makes things pretty simple. I'll post a link to this page in the video's description. The first thing you should do is download the installer from the first Mediafire link. You should end up with a WinRAR archive that looks like this. Extract only the installer, which is the very top one, to your desktop or whatever folder you intend to install Sappy into. Then run it, hit next for each of the steps, and you should end up with a folder that contains a bunch of crap similar to mine. The only difference is mine has a couple extra folders at the top, but don't worry about those for now. Next, go back to the form post and download the second archive. This will give you a modded version of Sappy, and your archive should look something like this. All you need to do is replace the other Sappy.exe that you just downloaded with the modded version of Sappy.exe. So literally, just swap the old Sappy with this one. And that's it. We're all done downloading Sappy. Before we do anything else, we need to get a program called Mid2AGB, which is easily accessible online. Once you download it, place it in a folder inside of your Sappy folder, as displayed on screen. Inside of your mid2agb folder, you should have something called mid2agb.exe, plus some other files. If you do, then we can move on to the next step. Go ahead and launch Sappy. If you're not able to open it, then you may need to search for alternative solutions. Unfortunately, I cannot help with the issue any further than I already have. Upon loading a ROM, you'll see a box at the top indicating which song we're currently looking at along with its hex code. Search for Pallet Town and select it. Next, hit the green down arrow to the right of the program. This will expand some of the details of the song. Before we play the song, I want to go over just a few things about Sappy. As already mentioned, the top area deals with the song selection. The speed value can be used to speed up or slow down the song in Sappy, not in the game. The slider can be used to increase or decrease the song's volume in Sappy, not in the game. The play button and the stop button are used for playing and stopping the song. Pretty simple. The cascade of numbers in the black area refer to each individual track that the song is composed of and some information about it. The only bits of intro we're interested in looking at in this tutorial are the red value and the green rectangles that are about to debut on screen. Here's what it looks like when a song is played. Notice how the red numbers are 5, 80, 
24, 81, 4, and 4. These values refer to the instrument that is being played in that particular track. So, for instance, whatever instrument 4 refers to has two separate tracks dedicated to it, which means that instrument may be playing two different notes at the same time. The green bars that expand and shrink indicate which instruments are currently playing and their volume. If an instrument's volume is very high, the rectangle will be very wide. If the volume is quiet, then the rectangle will be more narrow. Finally, there's the yellow progression bar, which just tells us how far along we are in the song. You'll notice that the progression bar starts over when the end of the song happens. Obviously, this means that the song is looping. We will have to insert our own loop points in any custom songs we insert, which I will be covering soon. We can't start inserting a song if we don't have a song to insert in the first place. All songs must be in MIDI format. They must be MIDI files. A great place to get free MIDI files for almost any video game is vgmusic.com. If you've got a particular game in mind that you'd like to use music from, simply select its console and search for any MIDI files that people have created for it. Once you've downloaded a MIDI that you want to try inserting, place it in your MID2 AGB folder. For simplicity's sake, I'll be inserting Guardia Town's music from Pokemon Ruby Destiny Life of Guardians. I actually just ripped this MIDI from the ROM itself to save me some time. After your song is placed into the MID2 AGB folder, open it in Anvil Studio. You'll be presented with every track that exists in your song. In my case, there are only a measly four tracks, which makes this process much easier. Specifically though, this song only uses one track of String Ensemble 1, and three tracks of Pizza Strings. You can also see how instruments are being played over to the right. From here, hit View, Piano Roll Editor. This will show you exactly when certain notes are being played, which will be helpful when creating our loop points. Now comes arguably the most difficult part about music insertion. We can't just use any random instruments in our song. Each Gen 3 game contains its own voice groups, which we must adhere to when choosing which instruments to use. A voice group is basically just a group of instruments that are compatible with each other. Magnus has posted a comprehensive list of every voice group in every Gen 3 game. I'll post two links to each of these form posts in the video's description. So going back to Anvil Studio, we need to figure out which instruments we're going to be using in our song, and more specifically, what values are associated with them. If you click on one of your instruments, a box should pop up showing you which value it's associated with. String Ensemble 1 has the value of 49, and Pizza Strings has the value of 46. Since there are only two instruments I have to worry about, we actually have a good chance at finding a voice group in Fire Red that contains both of these instruments. Looking through the list, I found a voice group located at the location 0x49c0f4 that contains both of the instruments in my song. String Ensemble 1 is just strings in this list. You may notice that the values of these two instruments in Anvil Studio were 46 and 49, not 45 and 48. This is just a little discrepancy that you don't really have to worry too much about. The only difference between the values in this list and the values in Anvil Studio is that Anvil Studio simply adds one to each instrument's value. So strings in Anvil Studio is 49, while in this list it's 48. Simple. This is also how it works in Sappy. Remember those red values introduced earlier? Those values refer to each individual instrument. If you ever want to figure out which instrument is being played in Sappy, just cross-reference the red value you see with Anvil Studio's list of instruments, offset by plus one. Anyway, let's move on. You're going to have to change which instruments are in your song by clicking on them in Anvil Studio and changing them using the pop-up box from earlier. Honestly, sometimes it's just easier to delete some tracks if you're finding that there are just too many instruments in your song to deal with. This pick-and-choose phase is the most annoying part of music insertion, in my opinion. Getting your instruments to match with a voice group can sometimes be downright difficult. Don't be afraid to search for a different song if yours is too complex to deal with. Now that our instruments are ready to go, we need to insert loop points. Sappy won't loop songs for you, which is probably for the best since not every song has natural loops on its endpoints. 
To create a starting loop point, click in the Piano Roll Editor where you want your song to start looping from after it ends. Then hit the New Cue button at the top center of the program and type an opening square bracket into the pop-up box. Then hit OK. Next, click where you want your song to quit progressing. When the song hits this point, it will loop back to your opening loop point that you just created. Once again, hit New Cue and type in a closing square bracket this time. Hit OK and that's all there is to it. Now we need to save your changes. Hit File, Export MIDI Format 0 file. You can overwrite the original MIDI if you'd like, or save it as something new, but make sure it remains in your MID2 AGB folder. Exit Anvil Studio and navigate to your edited MIDI file. We need to generate a .s file, which is what Sappy uses to insert the song into the ROM. To do this, simply drag your MIDI file onto mid2agb.exe. So literally just drag the file onto the executable and let go. This will generate a .s file of your song, which will be placed in your mid2agb folder. Go back into Sappy and select Palette Town if it's not already selected, and click Assemble Song. A box will appear asking for a bunch of information. The first box is your .s file that you just generated. The second box is the ROM itself. The Base Destination Offset box is where your new song will be inserted in the ROM. Make sure to pick a location with a decent amount of free space. If you want to get a feel for how much space is required for a song in general, after you insert your song, open your ROM in a hex editing program and navigate to where you inserted it. The Voice Group Offset box is for the location of the voice group that contains the instruments in your song. Here's the one I'm using as a reminder. Ignore the MST Offset box. When you're finished, click Cook It. Sappy will then configure and insert your song. Click the play button and listen to the result. Sounds like it worked. Notice how the red values are the same as the instrument values in Anvil Studio, just subtracted by one. Sometimes at this point your song will play, but it won't sound as good as it did in Anvil Studio. Don't be too upset about this, it happens probably about half of the time I insert music. If it's just too different and doesn't sound good anymore, then you can either try deleting tracks, you can try changing the instruments in your song, or you can try scrapping the song altogether. If a single track sounds off, you can try pinpointing exactly which one it is in Sappy, then changing the track's instrument in Anvil Studio, or deleting the track altogether, then going through the .s generation and insertion process once more. The good news is that my song sounds pretty much perfect in Sappy, so now let's listen to the loop we made. Sounds good. Now there's only one thing to do, and that's checking out the results in-game. It sounds like everything worked flawlessly. You should always test out your song in-game before assuming it worked because it sounds okay and sappy. Sometimes the two mediums just don't display the same reality. For example, sometimes you might hear a loud crackling sound coming from your music in game. This happens because your song is way too loud for the game to handle. To fix this, simply open your .s file in Notepad or some text editing program and change the highlighted value to something a bit lower, like 100 or 90. Then try inserting the .s into your ROM again at the same location and see if the crackling went away. Another problem you may run into is if you have too many instruments playing at once. To help boost the limit on how many direct sounds you can have playing at a single time, go into Sappy Settings. Under the Extra tab, change the Direct Sound Limit to whatever your ROM's true limitation is. Jambo51 has provided these limits for us in a forum post. 
Even if this isn't really an issue for you, you may want to boost the limit anyway in case you do happen to run into this problem later on. I'll post a link in the description of this video to the direct sound limitations and some interesting information about it if you're curious. The last thing I want to cover is Alyssa's All Instrument Patch. This patch is adopted for Fire Red, Ruby, and Emerald fortunately. This patch basically creates a custom voice group that contains literally every single instrument. This implies that you don't have to worry about changing the instruments in your song to match with one of the original voice groups. You just have to assign the custom voice group location in Sappy when you're assembling the song and all of the instruments in your song should sound okay. Obviously this is a very attractive patch. It pretty much eliminates one of the hardest and most frustrating parts about this whole process. However, I've found that it sometimes creates other issues. For example, on some ROMs, it causes all battles to freeze or a white screen on startup. It also uses a greedy amount of memory and you're not able to specify in the ROM where you want to insert it. You just better hope that you don't have other data at the location. There are some modifications of the patch throughout the comments of the forum post, which allow you to specify custom insertion locations or apply the patch to an expanded ROM, for example. If you can apply this to your ROM and get it to comply, then good for you. I strongly suggest using it in this case. If you do see any immediate issues with it, I suggest dealing with the original voice groups instead. Almost all of the completed ROM hacks out there with custom music have dealt with the original voice groups without much of a problem, so you're not really at a disadvantage if you can't get the patch to work properly. I'll post a link to this patch in the description of the video. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in this video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 28th installment of this series.